Good morning and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I have, in my opinion, concrete proof that we are in an implementation process worldwide. And I'm going to be going over my case for why I believe that. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research and make your own decision. Highly recommend you watch this entire video. It takes me a little while to get through all the different parts of this because there are numerous different parts of this that I need to go over. And I did miss some of the stories in here, but the bigger story was the whole thing that happened and how it got reported in the timeline on which it got reported. And that's what I'm gonna be going over in this video. Highly recommend you watch this entire video, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. So I have a timeline here, this is in chronological order. And really quick, let me give a shout out to Crypto Mason, who was the video that I watched last night that I found out the Chivo wallet in El Salvador is built on Algorand. I did not know that. I went back and I saw where the story actually came out. And there's some very interesting things in here that I wanna go over. Um, but I did see this on Crypto Mason's page last night, so I want to give him a shout out. And then also George had reported this a week or so ago um, on CryptosRUs.com, where he regularly puts out news stories. So I just wanted to give both of those YouTubers a shout out really quick. Now, but I think that most people probably missed the bigger story, including myself, and that's what I'm going to be going over right now. Now, somebody else may have already been through this. I don't know. I haven't seen the video. So if so, just let me know in the comment section. But as soon as I saw this and I put everything together, I said, wait a second, they would have had to have been working with Algorand months, months before this announcement happened, months before this wallet went live. And that's what I'm going to be going over is the timeline here. And in my opinion, this shows a, a strategic, well thought out, well planned implementation process. And they are being selective with when they decide to announce things to the public. And the reason that I wanna go over this and emphasize this so much is because I believe there is an avalanche of announcements that are sitting back and that are not being announced and they're gradually letting announcements come out day after day. But I believe there is a mountain of, of announcements that have already been agreed upon. They've already developed the technology. They've already done the testing, the troubleshooting. They're ready to go live and they just have not made the announcement yet. And I'm gonna tell you why I think that using this as an example. Okay. Whew. So this is the timeline here. August 23rd, August 31st, um, September 7th, September 7th, so on and so forth. And so I have all of this laid out in a timeline. So that's what I'm going to start with. So on June 5th, Naib Bukele made the announcement that Bitcoin was going to be legal tender and that it was going to go live. A couple of days later, they passed the bill and then they announced it was gonna go live on September 7th. So from June 5th to September 7th, we have about 90 days. So about three months, all right? Now there was nothing that really came out in this time period. All we heard was they're getting ready to go. Jack Mahler's is going down there to help out with everything. You know, they're doing all their testing, they're getting people used to the new technology, they're, they're getting their government or their, you know, the, all their corporations and everybody ready to go to be able to accept this new form of payment, all these other things, right? But we didn't hear anything about Algorand, about Flexa, about anything like that, right? Now, let's fast forward, go all the way to August 23rd and the Chivo wallet was announced that it would go live on September 7th. Now, this was from Naib Bukele's Twitter account, and so this was the article that was written about it. Naib Bukele tweeted Sunday, the Chivo wallet will be available for download on September 7th, and then it talks about how using the wallet is optional, um, but it does say the wallet will enable. This is talking about the functionality of the wallet. It's important you know, this is an important factor here. I'm going to talk about the timeline and the fact that they can already talk about the functionality of the wallet and how all this is going to be set up tells me that it's almost done, if not already done by August 23rd, and they're just working on the testing and the troubleshooting before it goes live in two weeks. So from August 23rd to September 7th, you have two weeks, right? And so the fact that they're already announcing how it's all going to be set up tells me that it's probably already done on August 23rd, or they're almost finished with it, and they just have to do testing, troubleshooting. Okay, so again, they're talking about the functionality. It will enable Bitcoin uh, payments in Bitcoin or dollars between individuals and businesses, regardless of where they are in the world. And then it says those without citizenship may access it, it as well. Since Bukele said tourists will be able to receive tips in Bitcoin through El Salvador's digital wallet infrastructure. Now, stay with me real here. All right, users can also retain their Bitcoin later. 
withdraw it in cash at 200 of El Salvador's ATMs. The Cajeros Chivo will act as withdrawal kiosk. So they already have the kiosks being set up, right? To be compatible with the Chivo application. And they can talk about this two weeks before it goes live. They already have the kiosk being set up and they also have 50 so-called Puntos Chivos which will allow deposits and withdrawal, as well as act as centers for troubleshooting and cryptocurrency education as it relates to the wallet infrastructure. So they have all of the all of this thing getting set up, and I imagine that much much this much of this, if not all of this, is integrated with Algorand. And so that is the August twenty third announcement. Okay, now on August thirty first, they tell us that Algorand signed a deal with the you know with koi banks for the government infrastructure this is the announcement right el salvador signs a cooperation agreement with koi banks now it described koi banks as a digital asset infrastructure firm and that they were working with algorand and that the, the koi banks was the one that was working with the el salvadorian government almost like koi banks was like a government contractor and that they were finding the provider that they needed to do what they to do what el salvador needed them to do so this announcement came out on August 31st, but this was this was after we had already heard about how everything was set up and the functionality that the wallet would have and the help the different help kiosks that they have as, as well. So we heard how the whole infrastructure was going to be set up back here, but we didn't hear the announcement about El Salvador working with the government and we're working for the government infrastructure. We didn't hear about that until August 31st. Now, fast forward one week. Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes live with the Chivo wallet. This was Bitcoin El Salvador Day. And on that day specifically, there were two announcements that came out. The announcement that the Chivo wallet was on the Algorand network, and then two, the Flexa announcements, announcement. Now, the Algorand announcement that you know El Salvador was, you know, the Chivo wallet was on El was on Algorand. This is a very important article, and I want to read over it. So stay with me because there's a very important nugget in here that I, you know, I missed just all of this. Bitso, a major cryptocurrency exchange in Latin America, and some of y'all may have seen this before. I understand, but let me tie it all in together. Will be the core crypto service provider for the El Salvadorian officials Bitcoin wallet, known as Chivo, in conjunction with Bitcoin becoming legal tender in El Salvador. Bitso announced on Tuesday that the firm would assist El Salvador in launching the state-supported Bitcoin wallet along with companies like Silvergate Bank, a digital currency company, Athena Bitcoin, and blockchain firm Algorand. Now, Silvergate Bank, a California state-chartered commercial bank, and a United States Federal Reserve member will work with Bitso to facilitate US dollar transactions for the Chivo wallet. I'm gonna read that one more time. Silvergate Bank, a California state charter commercial bank and a United States Federal Reserve member will work with Bitso to facilitate US dollar transactions for the Chivo wallet. Okay, Silvergate Bank, founded in 1988. Silvergate is the leading provider of innovate, innovative financial infrastructure solutions and services for the growing digital currency industry headquartered in San Diego, California, and a Federal Reserve Bank, United, Federal Reserve, United States Federal Reserve Bank member working with them to help facilitate this entire process. And we hear that announcement the same day the same day that Bitcoin goes live. Think about it. Bitcoin takes all the headlines. The whole story is about Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. I believe the market also dumped that day, but the whole story was about Bitcoin, 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 right? And that the, and that the, the IMF hated, hated this move and the banks just hate this and the banks are afraid and so on and so forth. But yet a United States Federal Reserve member, Silvergate Bank, was working with them to help make this whole process happen. All right. And that announcement was buried on September 7th, the day that Bitcoin went live, along with the announcement about Flexa. Now, me, in a very naive manner, I thought that when I heard the Flexa announcement that they had tried to make this happen on their own, had issues with the payments. And so then they went to go tap Flexa to use them to enable payments around the country. I don't know why I didn't catch this when it initially happened. Um, but when you add the Algorand part to it as well, you add the Chiba wallet on Algorand in that, and you add the Silvergate bank to it, it, it just, it ties all in together. So they did not make the flex announcement until September 7th. But the point that I'm trying to make is that if the wallet was ready to go live, 
on September 7th, and it went live on September 7th. And the announcement about how all the wallet and all the help kiosks and everything was going to be set up and the functionality the wallet had, if that was announced on August 23rd, then this was already completed by August 23rd, more than likely, and they were just going through their testing pr process. So when did they st start working with Algorand? Okay. So because I would argue that it was probably at least at June 5th, if not before, if they are developing their own government, you know, issued wallet that has unique functionality that they're going to issue to all of their citizens, as far as their new government infrastructure, their, their new government wallet that they're going to be using, their digital wallet, when, was, when did this start happening? And I would argue that it, it started happening probably, you know, at least two to three months before any of these announcements, any of this happened. It, it, you, can't, you can't throw something like this together in a few days, especially not at scale when you need the entire country or a sizable percentage of the entire country to use it. We're not talking about a basic, basic messaging app either. Okay, we're, we're talking about an app that has to be integrated into Bitcoin, has to have US dollar functionality, fiat functionality as well. You have to be able to send peer to peer. You also have to be able to use to pay out at stores probably numerous other types of functionality. They talked about the different kiosk and everything that was going to be set up that will be acting as centers for troubleshooting and cryptocurrency education. So they're, set, they're setting up these, these puntos chivos that are gonna be acting as centers of troubleshooting and cryptocurrency education along with these withdrawal kiosks setting up everywhere. So when was all of this developed? If this was ready to go live on September 7th, we don't hear about Algorand working until a week before then. When did they start working on Algorand? Like how long have they been in development? And the point that I'm trying to make is that we are not hearing when these things start happening. We are hearing after they go live. So when they go live, they have been working on this for months, right? And the partnership was months and months before that. First, they agree on which particular provider they're going to use. Then they come to that agreement and then they start actually working on development. Now development, depending on what you're developing is going to take some time. And after you're done with development, then you have to do all the testing, the troubleshooting, the education, the training, all of these different things. So we are being told when they go live, the reason this is so important is because there is probably a mountain of announcements that is not being pushed out and it's not being pushed out for a reason. And there's another part that I want to make to this. Think about how much, how often we hear them talk about Bitcoin in El Salvador, Bitcoin in El Salvador, and how often we hear Naibu Kelly come out and say certain things. Why doesn't he ever mention that the Chiba wallet's built on Algorand? Why doesn't he ever mention that? Why didn't he ever mention anything about Flexa? It's not like that this would all be running perfectly smoothly if they did not have those two different types of technology that were helping facilitate this entire new tech system that they're using with Bitcoin as legal tender. They don't come out and say anything about the other technology. They want the conversation to be only about Bitcoin because the reality of it is, is that this is just a country moving to blockchain technology, period. It's not a country that's adopting Bitcoin as legal tender and that's the story. This is a country that is moving moving from the old systems entirely to blockchain technology. And as a part of that, they're using Bitcoin as legal tender, but they don't want the conversation around that. They don't want to have conversations around the effect, efficacy of blockchain technology and how much better it is than our current systems. They don't want the conversation to go there because then their narrative falls apart that you know it's not backed by anything and there's no intrinsic value. You know, if you're if you have a cryptocurrency and behind that cryptocurrency, there is a global you know, computing network that has tons of applications that are built on top of it that have real world applicability and that solve real world issues. Uh, yeah, you can't fall back on there's nothing backing it anymore, right? And so they gotta, they gotta keep the conversation away from the fact that there's real software and real technology behind a lot of these different cryptocurrencies. And that's why they have, that's why they have reported it the way that they have in my personal opinion. We are not being told when they decided to partner together. And I understand companies like, you know, uh, Flexa and companies like Algorand, they have, you know, different type. they might have an NDA and they might've wanted to wait to announce these things. All I'm saying, and, and that might be perfectly fine. And, and they can do that all that they want to. All I'm telling you is that regardless of why they decided to wait to announce all these things and why they buried it on El Salvador day, regardless, Regardless of their reasoning for that, what I'm telling you is that these things were being worked on all throughout here and possibly before June 5th. They had to have been. You can't just throw something like this together last minute and be ready to go. So this had to have been, work, been working on long before those announcements came out.
And so why would they sit on those announcements? Why would they intentionally sit on those announcements and not make that known to the public? But then, and even if you're going to do that, why then after you make those announcements public, do you completely ghost the whole story about Algorand and Flexa and how this is really a transition to blockchain technology as opposed to just a transition to Bitcoin as legal tender? Because they have to control the narrative. They don't want people talking about the efficacy of blockchain technology and how it's a better system and how we're seeing a major transition and implementation of blockchain technology all around the world. They don't want that conversation to take place. And so that's why, in my opinion, they bury these stories completely. And if you even think of people like Max Kaiser and, and even Naib Bukele coming out talking about the Chiba wallet, talking about how great everything is, talking about how they're moving along, they, they, they don't mention the other technologies that they are using to help facilitate all this. In my opinion, they are intentionally, intentionally suppressing these stories. Why they're doing it, there could be a number of different reasons why. I don't think that, I think they want to control the narrative. I don't think that they want the, con the bigger conversation to be happening about the implementation of blockchain technology. And because of that, they're not talking about it. We are being told when they decided, we are not being told when they decided to partner together, then began developing and ultimately create a product or solution needed. Then you would have to do extensive testing, training, troubleshooting before going live. Then you're ready to launch. How long that takes, it depends on whatever it is that you're building and how many, how, what scale that you're trying to implement it on. But the fact that this all happened at the same time, they were, had to have been working with Algorand long before then, long before then. And so the point that I'm trying to make is what I see is I see El Salvador as the test net to the entire implementation process. El Salvador was going to be the first one that adopted this entirely new system all across the board, getting rid of all the old payment rails and moving to a blockchain-based system for the entire country and moving to digital currency in the form of Bitcoin as their own currency. And that they were the test net for everything. And that's why these stories have been intentionally suppressed. So the conversation is solely about Bitcoin, only about Bitcoin. We're just using Bitcoin as legal tender. That's it, nothing else. That's what they want the conversation about. Shiva Wallet on Algorand was announced on September 7th, not on the Algorand website, okay? It was not announced on, the, on this announcement that came out right here um, on the Algorand website. It did not say anything on August 31st about the Chivo Wallet being on Algorand. It didn't say anything about that, okay? So Flexa was also announced on September 7th. Both stories were buried. No conversation about a success story for blockchain as a whole. It was only about Bitcoin. All right. These stories have been intentionally suppressed, in my opinion. The Silvergate story, which I mean, <laughs> when that's the the when that's one of the back page stories of, of a particular, you know, of a particular story, then, then you know that there's a lot going on here. So Silvergate Bank, right? Silvergate Bank, a United States Federal Reserve member, is working with them to help make this possible. But yet they're going to sit here and say that the banks hate crypto, the banks hate crypto. And we have a US, United States Federal Reserve member working with them, and we don't hear anything about that. The Silvergate story was also squashed, in my opinion. There is an avalanche of announcements that have not been made public, an avalanche of announcements that have not been made public. The last point that I want to make here. So if you're in El Salvador and you're using either the Strike wallet or the Chivo wallet, and you have your crypto on that wallet, and you're paying at the store, so Flex is enabling payments down there. So if we know that Flexa is enabling payments down there and they're either using Strike or they're using Chivo to store their crypto, is there an integration with Flexa and with Strike and or Chivo? Because how are they paying with Flexa if Flexa is not integrated into this app? They would more than likely need to use the Spend app. So maybe they're all using the Spend app too. However, it would be much easier for Flexa to just integrate directly with Chivo or directly with Strike and have that pay with Flexa, Flexa option. I don't think that they are with Strike because I don't know how they would be able to keep that information from getting out to the public. Um, but they very well may have that integration built out with the Chivo wallet. And that raises a whole nother question. Okay, is there, you know, is there compatibility between Flexa and Algorand? You know, because if it would, it would make sense that there would be. Um, so all I'm saying is that there's a lot of stuff that's going on that we are not being told. And, you know, the, the thought of getting out of this market, and this kind of tells me 
this is my personal opinion. None of this is financial advice. This is my opinion. This tells me that El Salvador is a part of all the other countries, you know, new implementation movement. I originally thought I said, okay, this might be, you know, this might be them just doing this on their own, acting independently because they know that, you know, there is going to be a blockchain movement that happens. They want to get out in front of it. So maybe they're just deciding to do this and, you know, on their own independently. But this tells me the fact that they're working with Algorand, an official partner of the World Economic Forum and a part of the ISO 20022 standard, and they're working with Flex, the fact that they're immediately partnered with two of the main companies you would expect them to partner with for these other things, the fact that that, that tells me that this is all already figured out. And Algorand, I mean, uh, El Salvador was the immediate first country going to be the test net. And all of these things were figured out long before that, because you can't just snap your fingers and develop technology, have it ready to scale, have the functionality that you need and have all the testing, all the training done. You can't just snap your fingers and make that happen in an entire country. OK, so these things were being worked on months before and they did not announce it to the public. But when they did announce it to the public, even then they still buried the story, intentionally buried the story. The Silvergate Bank part of this is a huge, huge deal. So that's my video. I would not, I mean, this, in my opinion, is just more evidence that we are in a, in a strategic, calculated implementation process that has a timeline, that has a schedule, it has an itinerary, everything is ready to go, right? The next stage, stage of it is already laid out who's partnering with who, who's using who, all of these things have already been worked out in my personal opinion. And we are only going to hear about the announcements when they go live. When they go live and operational, we will hear about the announcements. We will not hear about the months before that, that they had agreed to a partnership, they were developing on the new technology, they were working out all the issues and they were getting everybody ready to go. We're not gonna hear about it until it goes live. So think about how many stories, how many announcements, how much new adoption has already happened and is in process of happening right now, but they are not reporting that to the public. While they're simultaneously trying to FUD as many people as they can out of this market, we are in an implementation process. And if this does not further, you know, for show further evidence of that, I don't know what will, all right? Because even in a country that made it look like that they were their own independent thing, acting independently from the other countries, they're still using Algorand. And not only that they're using Algorand, they're making it very secretive that they're using Algorand and how big of a deal Algorand is in their country and how much they're relying on them at this point in time, considering their government issued wallet is built on Algorand and the rest of their government infrastructure is built on Algorand. Whew. That's all I got. That's all I got. Never panic sell under any circumstances ever. We are in an implementation process. They cannot stop. If you're in cryptocurrency right now, if you're invested, not financial advice, but if you're invested in blue chip cryptocurrencies right now, you have them nailed to the wall. You have these people nailed to the wall. They have nowhere to go. They're going to continue to implement the technology. At some point, they're going to crank it through the roof, have no idea when that's going to be. But it's going to happen at some point in time because all these people also own cryptocurrency. So this is their new system. This is their new system, period. There's no reason why anybody should ever go anywhere and get flooded out of this market. That's not financial advice. I'm just saying that's my general position on it. This is an implementation process. Everything that we hear is just, it's all, it's all a big story. It's all a big show, in my personal opinion. That's all I have for this video. <laughs> not that that's a bad thing. And I don't mean to like come out and speak. I'm not talking badly about Luke Kelly or about Flex or about Algorand or anything. As you know, I'm big bulls on Flex and on Algorand. I'm just saying that there's information that is being withheld from us. And there are very large announcements that are just sitting behind waiting to be announced. And, you know, you just got to think long and hard uh, about you not being in this space when some of those announcements hit. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you, everyone who's liked, share, and subscribe. Never, never, never panic sell because this is the implementation process globally, globally in all countries. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you, everyone who's liked, share, and subscribe. Take care. Have a good day. I'll see you next video.